well, not all my neighbours know what I am. Yes, I have a bad reputation for eating roadkill. Well, here we are at the gateway to our property. It is Butterwell Farm. We had a badger come across here. Um, ran across here and over there. Every night he was coming down, and one night coming up, I very nearly ran him over. Just caught sight of him, about to go under the wheels. Have you ever run over an animal by accident and then eaten it? Yes. Yes, I've, I've hit a f an, 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 a no, at least one pheasant and one rabbit. But I will do my utmost to avoid killing anything. This is a polecat ferret. I, I, I found it not a mile away from here, and it, as you see, it's been <laughs> thoroughly rolled out on the road. They, they, they stink. The flesh smells, but you can um, overcome that by putting the body into running water for four days and that will remove that uh, musky tang from the meat. But yes, you could eat it, but you'd have to be pretty hard up to want to eat a, a polecat. Mm. I live here on Bodmin Moor with my wife and with a cat. I'm, I'm often asked, how did this all begin? After 1976, when I was living on my own, I didn't have to bother with anybody else's feelings in the matter. The, the food was there to be brought home and eaten. I would pick up roadkill in those days to, to bring home and mount. I am a taxidermist, and so I'd skin things and then stuff them and instead of throwing the body away I decided to start eating them. I think that's how it became, came about uh, on, on a regular basis. Yes, I'd certainly, I'm pretty sure I'd eaten badger before that and, and a swan. Right, here is the famous freezer. A, a young hedgehog. A barn owl. That was nearby. An antler there and an antler there. This is a lovely bird. That's a snipe. I picked that up in Devon. I don't know what this fellow is. He's a reptile. Here's a, a sparrowhawk that flew into the window. In fact, I've got three sparrowhawks here. Badger. Cat. 2008. Hind legs of a cat. Butchered, ready to eat. And a buzzard. I have occasionally hit an animal myself by accident, but I never aim to kill an animal. I do my utmost to avoid it. I um, come across it in my regular or irregular journeys um, in and out of Cornwall. Badger, Camel Valley, April 2001. There's the heart, the kidneys, and, ah, yes, the testes, and his willy. Now the badger has a bone in its willy called the baculum. And uh, I've got quite a few of those. Is that something that's edible? You can eat the penis, yes. It's not particularly tasty, but uh, I'd imagine a bit like you know, in the Arab world, they, the horse penis is quite a delicacy. But I wouldn't say it's anything to write home about. This is the badger's head. This is my favourite because you've got the big muscles here and you've got the salivary glands, you've got the tongue, 
You've got the eyeballs, very essential for good sight, and then you've got the brain. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different tastes and textures in one saucepan. They all taste different, they feel different. Yeah, right here we are. Um, where do I find um, price range 180 to 680? Hello. It's, uh, it's reasonably undamaged. Yes, I know. I know. I've got it. Okay, we've got a badger. Um, we'll go along and see if I can uh, find that. Good. I don't eat everything I find, but uh, there's nothing in this country that I wouldn't eat. I've eaten a couple of bats, yes. Not a lot there, I must confess. Right, I've got the key. Would you ever eat your own cat? Where has she gone? There she is. There she is. Thank you. We had a cat that died, and it's buried up there. I I didn't eat it. Um. You know, if my wife find out, what what would I say? Jump down. Nineteen eighty nineteen eighty two, I cycled across America, from New Orleans to Winnipeg. Um, and I found a lot of roadkill, of course, on the way. Uh, on one occasion, I stopped near Kansas City. There was this brilliant scarlet bird lying in the gutter. And I stopped and picked it up. And as I did so, a car drew up beside me. And it was a police car. And he wound the window down. And he said, uh, do you mind stepping off the highway before you get killed? <laughs> so that was rather nice. Well, this looks like a fresh badger. Let's have a look at it and see what condition it's in. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not been squashed. Yeah. Hmm. It may have been here a little while, but uh, it doesn't look rotten yet. Its, it's, jaw, is, it's jaw is dislocated. Um, I would say it's been for probably at least a month myself, but it's been very cold weather, so it has kept. Yeah, it's, 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 it's edible, I reckon. I have never been ill from eating roadkill. I've been ill from eating food supplied at a buffet, for instance but I've never been ill, ever, eating roadkill. If it's well cooked, I think there's very little chance of any bugs, bacteria, surviving. So now that you've got the badger, what are your, what are your plans for it now? Well, we'll take it back and uh, see if it's okay, uh, and then skin it, cut it up, and eat it. It's a lady badger. I, I certainly think that there is a lot to be said against eating meat that involves animals being killed on my behalf the animals to be killed so that I can eat them and chuck away what I don't fancy um, is a terrible thing. You see people in a restaurant, they'll, they'll leave no end of, 
of meat uneaten, well, that animal has died in vain, in a, in a way, you can say. Shall we put it like that? Every joint of meat you eat has been hacked from a body like this. You never think of that when you tuck into a beef burger, do you? I've got the knife in, but still... Yes, you see, w with an intact skull, you can get a bit of leverage on it. Nice crunchy noises. There's the heart. Okay, that's all we want from this. I'm going to leave the um, neck. This I shall put out for the crows and the ravens and the buzzards and the foxes. The reason I started eating roadkill regularly was because I was on my own. My wife had been made to leave me. Ah, she'd been made to leave me by the religious sect to which I belonged. Well, this is me in the days when I was young and handsome. Do you want it under the light? I'm sitting on my bed in my aunt's house and I'm reading my Bible. I was a, a member of the Exclusive Brethren. I used to preach in the street three times a week or more. How long were you in the church for? Uh, until I was 36, when they kicked me out for questioning the administration. They wanted to stop us from interpreting prayers for the deaf people in the community, uh, and I questioned it. I have a twin brother. When I got kicked out, he had no more to do with me, and they made my wife leave me. It's unthinkable. So I got a divorce and uh, have since happily remarried. But I now do not believe in the existence of God. I suppose that eating roadkill is a, a new adventure. And uh, when you first go to eat something that isn't supplied by the butcher, you've got to cross a threshold. You are going into unknown territory. And all I'm doing here is uh, just sealing the meat, and that is well um, charged with onion and garlic. I, I had a badger once that uh, someone else had picked up and uh, put on one side because they wanted its skull. It was blown up like a, a, a horse on the western front uh, and uh, it smelt rather horrible. When I cut into it, um, the flesh was green but nevertheless, I persevered and uh, stewed it. It made the house smell like the old-fashioned um, mental hospitals used to. But boy, it tasted delicious. Ah, right, well, that's the casserole in the oven. And uh, to be well cooked, it wants to be in there for three and a half hours. Uh, then we'll see uh, how it goes. Uh, cannibalism. It, it's a tricky question. I think if I, I... I don't think it's for me to make comments about other people being cannibals, um, but if I were in a situation where there was human flesh available and it might 
sustain me or others with me, I would have no compunction about um, eating it. All right? <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Jonathan King and his son, Peter King. He happens to be the brother of my good wife. I knew someone who worked in a hospital lab who could have got a human leg for me. But I decided that, it, fun though it might be, it would be irresistible to tell somebody I'd done it. And once I'd told them, I would be branded forever as a cannibal. And who knows what that might result in. <laughs> mm, badger. This way, this way, this way. There we are. There's the skull. Meat slipping off it. Look at that, nicely cooked. Very, very good. Now here we have a casserole. Badger's head. Boit speciality. This is very tender. Mmm. I should be in at the brains in a moment. I think the brains have all bubbled out, actually. They have a tendency to do that. They, they're not where they originated. How about the tongue? Can't you pull the tongue out? I'm yeah, I can pull the tongue out. Uh, here is the tongue. Do you see the tongue there? Oh, jolly thing opens. There's the tongue. See that? Lovely. Badger tongue. Peter, oh. to the badger. To the badger, thank you. A Mrs. Badger it was. A badger sow. Mm, that's not bad actually. 